In this video, I want to talk about one of Serre's most famous papers, which treats the Mod 2 cohomology of certain eilenberg mclean spaces. I wanted to highlight some of the results in the paper I found most intriguing and useful, including an inductive method for determining the ADEM relations on the Steenrod algebra. One of the most significant results in this paper is Serre's correspondence between cohomology operations and the cohomology of eilenberg mclean spaces. Before summarizing and explaining his proof, I wanted to give a more category-theoretic proof relying on the Yoneda lemma. Note that Yoneda himself didn't prove this result. Rather, I wanted to use a result in category theory typically attributed to Yoneda in order to provide a different proof. First, I'll give some intuition behind this proof. Recall that the mth cohomology of a space x with coefficients in g is isomorphic to the group of homotopy classes of maps from x to the eilenberg mclean space kgm. This fact can be obtained by basic obstruction theory. As a result, a cohomology class U in the nth cohomology of Kgm corresponds to a map F sub U from Kgm to Kgn. From here, we can see that F sub U will induce a map on cohomology from Hm of Xg to Hn of Xg. Now, this map is natural, so F sub U star is a cohomology operation. Then we see that every cohomology class of an eilenberg mclean space gives us a cohomology operation. We could very well go in the other direction now, starting with a cohomology operation and showing that it has to be induced by such a cohomology class. However, the Yoneda lemma gives us both directions for free, so let's use that instead. Recall that the Yoneda lemma is stated as follows. If we let nat of AB denote the set of natural transformations between two functors A and B, and if A is represented by an object X, then the set of natural transformations from A to B is isomorphic to B of X. Furthermore, this isomorphism is natural. One comment about the statement of this lemma. I'm saying the set of natural transformations, but typically we'll be dealing with a group, or even an abelian group, of natural transformations. So if the target category of B is denoted C, then nat of AB will be an object in C. When we apply this result to singular cohomology functors, which are abelian group valued functors, we will have abelian groups of natural transformations. Now we can see how powerful the Yoneda lemma is when we're dealing with representable functors. Since we know that the mth singular cohomology functor with coefficients in g is represented by kgm, the Yoneda lemma tells us that the abelian group of natural transformations between the mth cohomology functor and the nth cohomology functor is isomorphic to the nth cohomology of kgm. Since these natural transformations are precisely what we mean by cohomology operations, we see that cohomology operations are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the cohomology of eilenberg mclean spaces. Now I'll present Serre's proof, which is a slightly more direct analysis of cohomology operations. However, his proof relies on the same principle. Namely, the naturality of cohomology operations features prominently, just as naturality is at the heart of the Oneda lemma argument I just gave. To start with, we define a cohomology operation relative to QNAB as a map on cohomology commuting with any induced map on cohomology. Serre's theorem then says that every such operation corresponds bijectively with the cohomology of an eilenberg mclean space. Let me first sketch Serre's proof of this theorem. First, he shows that we can assign to any cohomology operation a cohomology class. This part follows straightforwardly from the definition of a cohomology operation. Next, he uses the fundamental class of an eilenberg mclean space to obtain a cohomology operation from any cohomology class of that space. The final step is to check that these two assignments are indeed inverses, which is more or less checking definitions. For this proof, we're going to need to recall the definition of the fundamental class of an eilenberg mclean space. From Serre's computation of the cohomology of eilenberg mclean spaces, we have a fundamental class sitting in the first non-trivial cohomology group of KAQ. Here, of course, we're assuming without loss of generality that A is generated by a single element, as there's an easy way to extend the argument to finitely generated A. This class is special because the cohomology of KAQ is generated by iterated Steenrod squares of the fundamental class. I'm going to write this class as U. Now that this definition is fresh in our memory, we begin with the proof. If C is a cohomology operation relative to Q and AB, then clearly C of U is a cohomology class. We're going to call this class Phi of C. As advertised, this step was pretty straightforward. Now let little c be a class in the cohomology of KAQ, and x be a class in the cohomology of an arbitrary space x. 
Since singular cohomology is represented by eilenberg maclean spaces, this gives us a map g sub x from x to kaq, such that g sub x star of u equals x. Furthermore, this map is unique up to homotopy, again by the representability of singular cohomology. Now, it can be checked that the assignment taking x to g sub x star of c is natural, so we have a cohomology operation relative to q and a b. We'll call this operation psi of c. Now we have to check that these two assignments are indeed inverses of each other, so let C be a class in this cohomology group. By definition of our assignments, we have that phi of psi of C equals g sub u star of C, where g sub u star is the induced map described in the previous slides. Recall that g sub u star of u equals u and is unique up to homotopy. Well, we certainly have a good candidate for such an induced map. Since the identity map has this property, we can take gu to be the identity for our purposes. Then clearly, phi of psi of c equals gu star of c, which equals c. Now let c be a cohomology operation and set little c equal to phi of c, which equals c of u. If x is a class in the cohomology of an arbitrary space x, then applying psi gives c of x, so phi and psi are indeed inverses. Now I wanted to go over a nice little method Sarah has for determining the ADEM relations. Of course, there's the usual formula, which allows you to decompose a non-admissible iterated square into a sum of admissible ones. However, Sarah has an easier way that relies on a neat little trick. Let C be a sum of iterated squares, and suppose that for every space T, the relation C of Y equals 0, for any Y in the mod 2 cohomology of T, implies that C of XY equals 0 for every x in degree 1, then c is identically 0. This seems like a weird criterion that can't possibly simplify the problem of finding these relations, but it turns out to be extremely efficient. For the first example, we're going to consider c equals square 3 plus square 1 square 2. Let's compute c of xy in two parts. The only part of this computation that isn't direct plug and chug is the fact that I used square 1x equals x squared. This follows from our assumption that x lives in degree 1 and really simplifies things for us. When we add these two pieces together, we can see that c of xy equals x c of y. Then we certainly have that c of y equals 0 implies c of xy equals 0. By Serre's criterion, then, we see that square 3 plus square 1 square 2 equals 0 identically. Since we're working mod 2, this means that square 3 is identical to square 1 square 2, which is one of the ADEM relations. For the second and final example, let's try a slightly harder relation, namely square 2 square 2 equals square 3 square 1. Again, we can compute c of x, y in two parts, and once again I'll be using that square 1 x equals x squared, since x lives in degree 1. When we add these together, we can see that using square 3 equals square 1 square 2 from before allows us to obtain c of x, y equals x c of y. Then once again, Serre's criterion is met, so we have that square 2 square 2 plus square 3 square 1 equals 0 identically, which is another of the ADEM relations.